So you have a litter of puppies mm -hmm. on the ground. And then we know there's a lot of evaluation stuff you can do with three-day-old puppies and six-week-old puppies. Mm -hmm. I always think that eight weeks is too early to observe talent, but when do you start seeing it, and then what are you looking for? Well, we'll see puppies point each other. You know, so you'll Just see that, that it, you know, three and stand four across so all the of room. A sudden you, yeah, point each other yep. out in the yard. I, mm -hmm. As they're running around the yard, they'll point each other. They'll pick things up and carry things. You know, they'll all come into a pup pup. I used to do wing on the string. I don't because I found it really. Doesn't. It's a bit of a parlor it's trick. A, it is a parlor <laughs> trick. Beyond some of that, let's just say bold puppy and and not the outlier that runs the other way. Right. What are you looking for when you're picking your own puppy? My own puppy is the one that nobody else wants. It's the maniac. It's the one that's climbing out of the whelping box. It's the one that's three <laughs> weeks old. All of a sudden, here it comes toddling down the hallway. That's my kind of dog. Out of these, you have one that's not going to be rambunctious this minute, but... I call him Stripe, actually. He's got a Stripe orange color, color with, with gray. But yeah, he has been something... Just from the minute. First, first to climb oh, out. First just to... everything. Just really, really a precocious pup. And there are two females that I, I really like out of this litter. Uh, teal girl and uh, light pink. If I were keeping a female, today, it would be today, it would be her. Yeah, just because of what you've seen. Yeah, and then he is actually a really independent puppy, the black collar one. Everybody will be in a pile there and he'll be over there. Your process when you've got a list developed of, of mm -hmm. potential future dog owners from your kennel. You try to match it up best with their situation, and ideally maybe you already sold them a dog before, and that helps. That helps a lot. Right. Like you saw the young couple that left a little bit ago, yeah. and that yeah. puppy was carefully selected for them because she was very snuggly. You know, they have no children. We don't have to worry about a puppy, like, pulling on the toddler's clothes. And she was very outgoing. They have a, a older wine. So mm -hmm. I wanted, we, we really take all that into consideration, whether there are kids in the house. An older dog that an would be alpha. Dog, yeah, an older dog that doesn't need that nonsense of having a puppy leap all yeah. over it. Yeah. So we look at all of those things. And I tell people all the time, I don't believe in pick of the litter. I believe there's the right pick puppy for each home. That's their pick right. of the litter. You cannot make it up. Oh, I'm Happy to help. Yeah. I, I, I didn't mind. She was awesome. I'm so was mad. this couple somebody you had dealt yes. with before? Yes. They have a pup that will be two this summer. Mm -hmm. And they've had several wimes before, but mm -hmm. they liked the wine that they got from us so much that they came back. Right. They got a female this time. And I think I heard him say he was going to do some blood tracking with it. Yeah, he, he's a big hunter. Big ar Probably archery hunter. Yes. Because they're the ones that lose <laughs> all the deer. Yeah. <laughs> And have you ever done that with them? Yeah, have you? quite a bit. Yeah, the first blood track I've ever, I ever did with he was I, I had just run him in his uh, NA test, and then archery season started, and the guy shot this deer, mm -hmm. couldn't recover it, probably jumped it, didn't let it lay long enough. Right. So I took this dog out, had never been on a blood trail, and he just nailed it. And I mean, took us took me right to it. So yeah, the, that dog in particular just had just, an, just was good at it, and it seems like the people that I have that are puppy owners that do it. Their dogs just do it. I could plug in your dog's um, NAVDA registry yep. number, and I'm going to pull up that dog's pedigree number, and it's going to show me all the offspring of your sires and dams. Yes. So let's say somebody says, boy, I looked you up on NAVDA. I'd like to get a dog from you. Do you have any, like, trick police questions that you no, take the conversation and we, you know, I ask judge them, it? Yeah, that, and I ask them what their hunting interests are. You know, if they're preserve hunters, they're going to get a different, a more laid-back dog. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're sharp tail hunters. So, okay, if they're so, like a so, Western western wild bird right. hunter. I, gonna... We ask all those questions. Right. And then how often do you think you get it wrong? I think over the years I've gotten a couple of puppies back. Yeah. But it was because their situation changed. Like we had a home a few years ago that she was pregnant when they got the puppy. Mm -hmm. They were fine with it, and they thought this will be good. Well, their baby was born with, with special needs, and it was just too much. They couldn't deal with a baby that had problems. Right. And, the, and a young Weimar on her puppy. So I, we drove down to Georgia and picked that dog up. And then just, I, I rehomed her, you know, and put it in. She's actually in really, really good hands. She lives in California now. Is that in your contract? Is, is that in your policy that you, you get contacted first? Correct. They don't go to rescue. They come to us they first come and to buy you. contracts. Now, there is rescue for every breed sure, out there, which sure. thank goodness there and, is. And we have great wine rescue in Michigan. Right. Um, they're, they're really good people, and they're very devoted to what they're doing. Right. But we, we stand by our dogs. Right. We take them back. And if I have to drive, 
I will drive to get that dog. It's just not, a, a, not an issue. Nope. That's pretty cool. Your goal is to get them into hunting homes, but your hunting home can be four weekends a year. It could be 60 days a year. We we consider a preserve hunter, even if they only go out four or five times a year, that's actually okay. I mean, they're getting the dog out. It's a family member. It lives in the house with their people, and they hunt the dog. Whether it's, you know, like not as much as us, but yeah, like get out. One of my favorite things that happens is we get a guy like that who is more of a preserve hunter or a gal. And they get the dog and they do their three or four weekends a year, but then they see what they've gotten and they didn't even realize. They want to do more. They want to do more. Yeah. And then they want to learn about woodcock hunting. Um, uh, Kyle down in Ohio, right? Like, right. He gets, now, they, now they have two of our dogs. So like this, this fella who was just hunting a little bit here and there is now like all in because right. the dogs. The dogs dragged him in? Yep, yep, yep. And, and that's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. You're, you're waist deep in the cement. I know on good authority that the, the customers that come to you and buy a dog, you're a resource for them. Correct. That's a different level. So I tell them all the time, I, you know, now that I have trained dogs to every level, mm -hmm. I'm comfortable helping people. Right. Mindy and Drew are both very good dog trainers as well. Yeah. So I tell people, like, jokingly but not jokingly, you get the dog, you get us. You know, you get right. me. Right. So we offer them up to help them up with any level they want to. And if they want to go further, we're right there every step of the way. I know you take that to another level here, too. We do. I mean, not only do you hunt outside your back door here, you have training days up here. You have fun hunts. You have customers come back and even other breeds come here. Right. I mean, you're not you're, you're not wine around, you're snobby. No, no we're not. I, you're, you're dog people lovey, but... Right. And, you know, we all help each other. But you basically invite people here all the time, yeah. whether they're customers the or not. But yep. obviously, if they live a thousand miles away, they're not going to be able to run back here and say, hey, Cam, yep. give me a hand. Do you have a network of kind of friends in the Weimariner world? Because I think I know one of them in Virginia. Sort of, and yes and no. We try to find the best trainer to fit them mm -hmm. in whatever area they are. Just you know, Sometimes they'll want to take to a, uh, their dog to a specific trainer, and I always ask, do they have experience with wimes? Because they can be softer. Mine typically are not after all these years, but I've had some litters that were. Right. And you have to learn to get away from that because you don't want to keep perpetuating you, that softness you, in the breed. You, right. You don't want a softness, but then you also you don't want something that somebody can't handle. That's yeah. a real balancing oh, act. Oh, it's a huge balancing act. And I tell people all the time, I'm... My goal and my mission is to stay on the path to produce hunting dogs for hunters. Right. So I, some dogs are just too much for people. Like the my 10-year-old right now, he's a lot of dog, and he was a handful when he was young. Was he? Now, yeah, oh, my gosh. He was, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stories. Did, did like, he not know his name at some point? Oh, no, he knew his name, and everyone in the whole county knew, knew his, his name. name. <laughs> I, I've Let's been there. Here. Anyway, thanks for having me come up here. It was really great to see both of you again. Um where are you going to be in September, and how's it going? You're... I will be running a bit in the Invitational. Um, I am cautiously optimistic okay. about where we're at. How's training going so far? Really well. She loves she loves to work. So, she... yeah, the more training we do, the, the more she loves it, and she just wants to get out there and do stuff. So Would you give it a 50-50 right now? Maybe better than that. Ooh. Cautiously. A couple months out, you're all Cautiously or... optimistic. Right. She's probably the steadiest dog I've ever had. Well, that's comforting. So very much that's, comforting. that's where that I feel off the table. really good about things. Like yeah. she's she's very, very steady. So So what's the date of that test? Uh we run the thirteenth of September and that's the first day of the event. And I believe is it five days this year? And it's, this is two we got two months. Two months. Two months. Well best of luck with Thank that dog. You. I want to hear immediately what happens. Cool. Either way. Yeah. Because I've been there and uh I wish you all the best. And Mindy, you. you have a long road ahead of you because I do. at some point, Cam's just going to say, here you go.
We have one, no, make that two favors to ask you. If you like the content you've been watching, please hit the like and the subscribe button and wish me luck. We're going grouse hunting.